Hi everyone, um, my name is Miss Monique. I am the new tutor at Emmanuel College and this is just a, sh well I'm not going to say it's a short video but I will keep it brief as I can. Um, just as a brief introduction about uh, the, the lessons that I will be running at the school and a couple of things to assist you in your practice time at home with the kids and um, and just a little bit about what we're doing in the lesson time. And I'll talk about, um, you know, some of the pieces that we're playing. So uh, in the comments below in this YouTube video, um, there'll be the times that you can fast forward to, to uh, group one through to four. And, uh, and that way you can kind of keep up to date with what your kids are doing each week. Hopefully I'll get a chance to do these videos all the time, but um, I mean, I like to promise that it's just uh, it's time consuming, but that's okay. I really want to make sure that your kids have all the support that they need at home and, and that you also have the support too. So um, I'll talk a little bit about like bow hold um, and a couple of things about like looking after the instrument. Um, and I also have a, I think I've already got a YouTube video up already of tuning the instrument. So I will also link you to that too, just in case your instrument goes out of tune at home and you want to know how to tune it. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I am so happy to do that in our lesson time. So, um, oh, another thing I wanted to discuss was the Desk Year Awards, which is an initiative that I have taken for all of the schools that I work at. And I find it a really great way to help manage behavior in the groups, um, to have the kids look forward to something at the end of the term. And it's a great motivator for like practice. Um, so hopefully you can also encourage your kids at home and use the whole, I won't, you won't get a desk year award if you don't do this. So, uh, yeah, feel free to use that as a, a bit of an incentive. Um, the, I, I did get a great message, uh, email from one of the parents, um, asking if it was a food reward and obviously, um, being in a school, it's, and, and working around children a lot, I really stay clear of any food kind of rewards, mainly due to allergies and, um, dietary requirements. So no, it will not be food. They're just like, I don't know. I don't want to give it away, kids. They're exciting. They're fun. So um, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or call me. Um, but let's get into the video. Oh, you'll meet Miss Kitty at some point. She's a nightmare. <laughs> Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, and this can apply to all of the groups um, from kindergarten all the way up to grade two, is bow hand. So I'm sure, um, hopefully many of your children have come home over the last two weeks talking about bunny rabbit hand, which is uh, the standard technique that you need to hold your bow. So I really try to avoid things called llama hand, where the fingers are quite, quite straight. So um, bunny technique is about keeping all the fingers really curved and then when you eat the carrot, which is the end of the bow here, that the fingers are nice and curved at the bottom. You can see that my thumb is curved, my two middle fingers are curved, my pinky is right on the end of the bow there and my other index finger is curved at the end here. Now this is like, this is standard technique. I've, I've also seen kids put their thumbs here inside the bow, which is also really cool. So you've got to keep, oh, there we go. You've got to keep your thumb nice and curved here. Now, if your student or your child is doing this technique, um, they really have to have a really good understanding of this technique first. So um, if you find that they're struggling with this hand here, please don't hesitate to kind of go, look, you can just put your hand back here, Miss Monique said it's fine. Um, now this, I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time, so this can feel kind of strange for kids. So I like to encourage, um, I like to encourage kids to even do a bit of practice without their violin of just holding their bow. So if you've got a favorite TV show that you guys like to watch together, um, or they're just sort of sitting around, you know, talking, <coughs> playing, um, I mean, you know, they can't really do all their playing games or reading a book, or maybe they can read a book. But anyway, just as much time as they can alone with their bow really starts to get them used to holding their bow and, and being comfortable with moving around with it. So um, parents, there you go. That's the technique that you want your child to master as best they can. And if you start seeing your kids, you know, pinky collapse over, just remind them to bring their pinky back on top of the bow. Or if they're finding that they're like gripping the bow like this, bunny rabbit hand. That's the, that's the, that's the word. Okay. So I will be obviously paying attention to this in my lessons time. However, um, usually cause I'm working with, you know, three to six kids in a group, it's something that I will point out, um, but it's definitely very useful for you to understand how this works at home so you can continue reminding your child about 
bunny rabbit hand and really good bow technique. So um, let's hopefully get all the kids with beautiful bow technique by the end of the year. Um, another thing is instruments, um, you know, tuning, all of that. Um, I mean, the kids are pretty good with their instruments. Like I haven't seen anyone disrespect them, which is really cool. So just, I guess, uh, I think one thing I actually mentioned to kids was naming their instrument. And I know this sounds silly, but I found that when I named my instrument as a child, I really valued it more than just an object. It became my friend, it became something that I really loved and, and something I look forward to playing every day or every week or once a week or twice, however long they want to play it. But um, for young kids anyway, just having that attachment to an instrument really starts to bring out the value of it. And, and I know that they will take care of it when it's got a name, okay, because they'll, they'll think very highly of their instrument. So um, this one's named after my sister, Jacqueline. So, <laughs> and the kids know all about my other instruments' names, which is super sweet. So if you can encourage your kids to name their their instrument um, I think you'll see their relationship change with their music and change with their instrument and that's ultimately my goal um, all right I'm next up I'm going to start with group one um, we're going to talk about what pieces they're playing I will run through pieces I will run through the scales and the pieces myself and um, and then if you're in the group two to four you can fast forward from this point onwards oh but don't miss miss kitty she will be right at the end of the video so just you can scroll through okay thanks everyone okay group one this is tal veronica zachary and manuela uh, i think they like to call her manu i'm happy to call her that as well um these kids work really lovely together actually it's it's really nice um having my I think they're, you're all great, they're all great too now, yeah. So uh, I think they do a great job of showing good leadership with each other. And I've given them some music, uh, I've given them some music for Drunken Sailor, which I'm gonna start working on with them, mainly because we've got some kids who have a much more advanced sort of understanding, well, not much more advanced, but a, an advanced understanding of reading and playing. And then um, and then there's some other kids who just need a little bit of extra time to like catch up, but they're not far from it. So if I give them some music that can allow them to catch up with the others getting some more advanced parts, it's gonna stop things like um, arguments about who can keep, who can play faster or who can read the music faster. So it will allow them to become a bit more of a, a solid team. So um, one thing that I started with them at the beginning of class was a D major scale and they've all been given music to follow that D major scale. And it's something that I really want the kids to do every time they practice. So every time they get out their instrument, they start with the D major scale. So I'm gonna play that D major scale for you now and you can get the kids to watch this. I feel like I should be just talking to them now. So kids, if you are, uh, if hopefully you're watching this, um, D major scale first, it's a number one priority. So I'm gonna play it for you now and you can have as much fun. We'll talk about rhythms after. So we're starting on an open D. We've got our bunny rabbit hand. Open D, three, Four. Open A string. Oh, you can see my fingers. A. One. Two. Three. Play the three again. Three. Two. One. Open A. All fingers back down onto D. One, two, three. D two. scale and I know a couple of them played that really beautifully um, in our last lesson uh, that's great I'm just gonna slightly adjust this so um, sorry one thing I also didn't mention was um, violin technique now I like to keep an open wrist here oh this positioning is terrible on this computer hang on let me see if I can do it this way there we go um, I like to keep an open wrist when I'm playing so try to avoid if you see your child um, collapsing the wrist kids not cool can't do this Keep that wrist open. So make sure that violin's up on your shoulder, that you can hold it with your head without holding it with your hands, and it will allow for some like really great intonation and great technique. So bunny rabbit hand, and open wrist right here. Okay, so D major scale, keep practicing it. Don't, don't just do single bows. I want you to be inventive. A scale is not the most exciting thing. So you can try different rhythms like run rabbit. <laughs>
slide in our class was um, actually saying like our favorite food. Um, one that I loved the most was matzo ball soup. So you can go matzo ball soup. So whatever, I, I love it. I think it's really cool. Um, the kids have got some great ideas. Be inventive, okay? This is what it's all about. All right, um, okay, so we've got Drunken Sailor. Um, I'm trying to think, what was the other song? Oh, we worked on Ferrajaka. Now this is a, um, this was easy for some of the students and a little bit more complex for others. And the great thing about this song is that it's focusing on uh, just first, opens first and second finger, um, which is perfect. So I'm going to play Ferrajaka and the kids can work on that. And I think uh, Veronica just needed a little bit of extra time working on her third finger, which she was doing great with the seconds. So I'm going to play the whole song nice and slowly, and that way the kids can kind of use this at home to play along with me as well, and they can rewind and watch it again and again. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play it nice and slow. Three, four. <laughs> stoked because we can actually do a lot with that first line um, and do like different rounds we can actually there's a huge amount of stuff to do with that song so um, more than anything if your child is or kids if you play that song really really well work on your technique make sure that is awesome because I'm going to be pointing it out every single lesson if I think oh you can play that song but that hand is sloppy you got to work on those sort of things okay so no one's perfect we've all got work to do okay um oh, that's it uh, that's all I've got for you guys this week. So keep up the practice. Bunny rabbit bow hands, good technique. Work on Ferro Jaka. I will do a video for Drunken Sailor later on, but we'll have a look at it in our lesson this week anyway. Okay, great. Uh, group one, you're awesome. I'll see you all this week. Bye. All right, group two, Joshua, Joa, Claudia, Emma, Miri, and Judah. I absolutely loved these lessons. I know there's a lot of you in the class, but it just works really well. They're just such good kids. They're super excited. Joa, it's awesome having you on the viola. Um, I do have my viola down here, so I'm happy to play your part on viola, even though it's exactly the same as violin. We're going to make sure that you keep playing that viola because it's awesome. Um, I'd like to welcome Judah to the group. He really showed me his great leadership skills in the first week and he worked with kindergarten kids and i just think it's it's really awesome to see older students work with younger students like that and and really um nurture them in that time and be super patient so judah you are at your place in this group it's such an awesome group so um there is a little bit of a, a range of um abilities in this group but it's nothing that i don't think we can kind of uh blend together within the next couple of weeks or at least within term four i think everyone's going to start finding their way again around each other so um songs that i like to start with we, we we start with the d major scale now i'm going to play the d major scale and i want you guys to always start with the d major scale in your practice at home it, it's a great way to strengthen all your fingers and it's a really good way of like warming up our mind to playing our instrument okay because like when you've had a busy day at school and you come home and you pick up your instrument the first thing you should do is something really basic okay so i'm going to start with the d major scale and i want you to pay attention to my nice i'm going to position my nice open wrist right here we don't want to collapse wrist so parents if you notice this and give them a nudge tell them about that wrist bunny rabbit bow hand that's got to be really nice um but let's start with the d major scale nice and slow Three, four. <laughs> to play. 
played the scale exactly like that. Um, we had a lot of fun this week um, making up different rhythms. So if you want to try something like Busy Busy Stop Stop. Or Run Rabbit. Or literally anything. If you can make up your own rhythm, even better. The more you practice that scale, the more awesome you'll be on your instrument. I promise you that. So don't make them boring for yourself. Be interesting, be different, try new things. Um, okay, so I wanted to play, I'm just looking through my notes here. I wanted to go through Cats in Coats and we just started Twinkle Little Star, which is really cute, so I'll bring this around. Um, we just started Twinkle Little Star. Now, I know that seems like, you know, a beginner's, like a baby song, but Twinkle Little Star has an amazing history behind it and it's written by Mozart. And, and one thing the kids kind of noticed was um, it's the same tune as the alphabet. So Twinkle Little Star is like, is very much in our music foundations and it's a super important song to learn. It was my first song that I learned and um, everyone's gonna know it. So we're gonna play, I will play through Cats and Coats and Twinkle Little Star and you can get the kids to follow along um, at home with this one. So you can listen to me play it and you can also play along with me at home. So let's start with Cats in Coats. I don't have my music, but I remember how this one goes. So I think we start on open D. Three, four, D, D, D. D. Rest. And scale on D. D. One, two, three, A. Big circle back to D and D. just to repeat that again and again and again. All right, um, I really like the blue book um, that we've been working on, the Encore Strings, I believe it's called. I know this book because I've taught students from it as well. So um, kids, have fun, make sure you learn that song. It's an easy one for you. If you know your D major scale, you're gonna kill it in that one. Okay, Twinkle Little Star, I'm gonna play this for you. Um, I think Claudia, you were doing a great job with this one, but sometimes your third finger, you might struggle with that. So I can give you an easy part to play along with the kids and you can also play along with this one at home. I wanna make sure that everyone feels um, comfortable to jump in and play whatever they wanna play, you know, and then as they get more confident, they're gonna get better at their instrument. Okay, so I'm gonna just turn this instrument, oops, moving this computer this way. Okay, twinkle little star, nice and slow. Three, open D, three, Four. First finger on A. One. Open A. Hold. D3. D3. D2. D1. And hold your D. Back to A. D3. D2. Hold. similar that I'm doing with group one. So uh, I might do some cool ensemble work for you guys as well. But look, give it your best shot. I will see you all on Thursday. You're all 10 out of 10. Uh, great. Cool. Oh, skip ahead if you want to watch Miss Kitty as well. All right. Bye. Hi, group three. This is my very special kindergartners. Um, I, I really had a great time on Thursday with you guys. The first week we were a little bit all over the shop, but I think we were just excited. But this week, I mean, last week, sorry, was great. They were so, um, they were so excited and they listened and they helped each other. It was actually the first group to receive double desky points for that week. 
and I just absolutely loved working with them. I had a really fun time. So Leo, Clementine, Ella, I think you guys are just a great group together. And it was so cool. Um, Leo, you were really, you were really helpful. And Clementine, you're doing a great job with your technique, and I'm so glad I get to be your teacher as well. Um, and Ella, like that was her first week playing, but we'd had a lesson the week before, and she really slotted in perfectly. And I just think the trio was like 10 out of 10 to work with. So, um, kids, this is definitely for you, and this is uh, also for mom and dad um, because they're going to need to help you at home as well. So I'm sure your kids talk to you about your bunny rabbit bow hand. Um, one thing I know with little kids, this is going to take a bit of time, so just be really patient. Um, but some things that we played with um, was taking our bow to the moon, landing our bow on a planet, and then going back and then landing back on Earth again. Now, this seems like a kind of silly game, but it really does help um, with your bow hand and feeling confident holding the bow. And it's something that I think would be perfect to just get them excited about practicing again. So instead of just like unpacking your instrument and making noise straight away, talk about, okay, let's let's take our bow to the moon. And so we landed our bow. I'm just gonna, oh, okay, hang on, here we go. We landed our bow on the ground and we took it up and flew to space. And then we land it out this way, we take it back up again, and then we took it back down to earth again. And you can kind of um, you can kind of play around with that. I think it's a really silly but fun game for kids. They love it. It makes them excited about playing the violin. And then once uh, once you kind of get a good grip on that, they can put their violins up on their shoulder. They can put their hand right here on the body because they don't need their fingers just yet. We will get to that very soon. But they can fly their bow to the moon, bunnies in space, I think we called it. And they're going to land their bow on their instrument and then take off again and go back down. So you can incorporate this into actually putting their bow onto their instrument, which I called, I think I always called it like landing on a planet bunnies in space. Um, it's a very silly fun game, but I had a lot of fun teaching the kids this. And I really noticed them wanting to do the right bow hand, you know, because they had to make sure it was a bunny going to space, not a llama going to space or a rock going to space. It had to be a bunny. So um, have a bit of fun with the kids. And if you've got younger siblings as well, this is such a cool way of getting them excited about playing an instrument too, because they will learn so much from their older siblings. So if you can all like get a stick or, you know, anything like that, you can all be involved in this, this little technique. Um, the more people are involved in the family, the more your child is going to want to invest in this instrument so um make sure they get make sure they show you how to take their bunnies to space so um technique now little kids especially kindergartners um they they have they do absorb a lot like i i love teaching young kids because i find that they can take in so much i'm sorry kids you're gonna get bored in a second <laughs> i won't be boring um so take their practice time in short short amounts, but try and do all of the fun things in that time. So for a kindergartner, I, I think if you can push them to do about 10 minutes by the end of the year, so start by five minute increments, and then as soon as you start to see that lose that concentration, just get them to put away their instrument and, and move on to something else. But if you can keep increasing that um, time, you're going to see your child um, move on into the later stages much easier than someone starting a little later on in their life. So um, be patient. Um, make sure it's always fun for them. Uh, you know, if they're tired or grumpy, don't even bother. Um, just make sure it's fun. And, uh, and, and then also get them to show you things too. It's really important that kids feel in control of their learning because it will make them more confident and they'll be more excited to come back to my lesson and tell me the things that they've practiced at home. So if they can show you something and you ask them questions about their instrument, they will take this on as their own and they won't feel the need to constantly have you in their practice time. So one step at a time, patience. Kids, it's all about you now. So kids, um, we're gonna do Bunnies to the Moon. I want you to practice that as much as you can. And I had a new song for you guys, um, Hanukkah song, which is heaven to teach to a Jewish school because I've never taught at a Jewish school before and I've never had the opportunity to teach this song to anyone of relevance. So this is really cool. So I, um, I've got to get my music, so just hang ten. I'm just going to pause this video. Oh, I think I can. I'll just leave it. Two seconds. Okay. Okay.
So this is the book that I will be teaching the kids from. It's called Abracadabra Violin Beginner and it's so cute. It's so lovely. The books have got all these great uh, violin techniques. I'm just going to put my violin down. They've got all these great pictures um, and it starts with just letters first. It doesn't actually start with reading music yet, which we will get to, so don't worry. But um, I just find that this is a really simple way of getting kids to play their violin without having to worry about understanding notes and understanding everything else. So this Hanukkah song here um, is super sweet and I'm gonna be teaching the kids this one. Uh, I think they'll really enjoy it. So I'm gonna play it for you now and you can use this at home. Um, okay. Hanukkah song. I'm just going to put this behind me so I can see it. All right. All right, kids, this is your time to shine. We've got our bunny rabbit hands. We're going to put our violins up on our shoulders, hand onto the body of our violin, and we're going to play nice and slow from our open A, which is the second string on your violin. All right, nice and slow. Ready, go. A, A again. A again. Tilt your bow to the E string. Back to A string, A, open E, E again, A string, A, A, tilt your bow E, A string, E string, back to A, and A again. All right, kids, so rewind, listen to it. You don't even need to play your violin. You can point to the notes as I say them. Um, but the more you listen, the more you learn. So have fun, kids. I can't wait to fly our bunnies back to space again. I'll see you on Thursday. Oh, fast forward to Miss Kitty now. Bye. Hi, everyone. Hi, group four, my awesome four group. Awesome foursome. I think that's what they call you guys. <laughs> How did I not get that? Okay, so... Four, number four. Um, this is with, um, oh, I'm just making sure, Tyler, Poppy, and Amelia. Amelia, it was so cool meeting you on our, our lesson on Thursday. You were so great in the lesson time. Um, it's been actually really cool having this group together because I think Tyler um, has a little bit more experience and he's doing really well. Poppy has got great technique. And Amelia actually um, really brought it all together as well. So what, oh, wait, there's only three of you. Oh, that's why it doesn't make sense if I call you the awesome foursome. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so kids, um, we had a lot of fun working with our first and second fingers, which was really great. Uh, we tried some different warm-ups. So some of the things I got the kids to do was making up um, a rhythm with their favorite food. So we've got um, burgers and chips strawberry ice cream, whatever you want to do, uh, it's a really good way. So I'm going to show you the warm-up that we did, um, and eventually I will get them to play some scales for me, but we don't have to worry about that this week. So let's start with the open D string, and I'm going to pick a rhythm, uh, strawberry and ice cream, and I'm going to play that rhythm with my, and I'll just position my camera so you can see my hand and my violin. I'm going to um, keep my wrist open like this. I'm going to keep my bunny rabbit hand looking amazing. And I'm going to try that rhythm just with open D, first finger, and then second finger. All right, let's do this. Ready, go. Strawberry ice cream. First finger. Second finger. Back to first finger. Open D again. Okay, so eventually you want to be able to do open D, first finger, second finger, back to first, and then open D. All right, kids. So I'd like you to try that on every string that you can. I want you to make up as many different ridiculous rhythms as you can and, and really just have fun because... Um, when you when you warm up with something silly and fun, you're going to be very excited to start your pieces. Now, um, we did two pieces using our first and our second fingers. Um, these ones were called, uh, forgive me I'm wrong, I know Amelia was telling me it was Stand in the Sun and it's something to do with treetops. So um, I have a feeling they're on first and second. I'm going to do a better video for you guys next week, but I believe it was the um, Standing in the Sun 
was our first finger on D string and we're just going one, 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 rest, 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 and I think one, two, three, four. So it's very basic. Um, what I'm actually going to do for these kids, for this group anyway, is um, I'm going to incorporate, I'm going to bring in some other songs for you guys that incorporate your first and second finger. We might start some next week, um, but I want you to work on uh, what was it called again? Stand in the sun and the treetops one. Just strengthening your fingers. But more than anything, I want you to have fun with your making up your rhythms, working on your technique. And I'm definitely going to get you guys playing some actual songs. Um, well, some like songs with some melodies. I think that's what you're totally missing right now. So we will start that. If you can just all remember to bring your books next week, that would be so cool. Um, then we could, we've got things to work on for homework. Um, stand, uh, sorry, the treetops one is going to be using your second finger on D. So when you set your hand up, I want to make sure that you've got your first finger down, then your second finger, and you're going to go two, 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 rest. pretty much the same uh, sorry I don't have my book here right now but I will do a better video for you guys soon but really work on your technique watch your bow hand we're gonna start some cool things for you guys because you're an excellent group and I really enjoyed um, having you all together on Thursday so now you can fast forward to the ridiculous Miss Kitty video I'll see you guys on Thursday good job children, this is me, Miss Kitty. Yes, that's right. I'm very excited to meet you all. I am a viola player and I will be your new consultant for anything that is music related. Mainly the, the things that I'm not so good at and things that you need to get good at. Um, Miss Monique, uh, yeah? I don't know how I feel about this camera angle. Well, it's the best I can do right now, Miss Kitty. I mean, this takes a lot of setup. Okay, children, well, I hope you don't mind. Um, okay, well, let me tell you a little about me. Yes, me, Miss Kitty. So wonderful. Uh, Miss Kitty, we've got a lot of stuff to get through. Maybe you could just keep it short. I'm doing the talking here. So, children, I hear you go to Emmanuel College, which sounds like a beautiful school. I hope one day I can come visit it. Um, things that I know Miss Monique has talked to you about is the Desky Rewards, and I'm sure you saw my beautiful face. Mm, on the front of the Desky Rewards. I am the one who gets the Deskies for you. Actually, Miss Kitty, I buy the Deskies. Well, I like to give the incentive. So, children, you must work hard to earn those Desky Rewards. So, um, mm, I would like to talk a little bit about practice. Yes, practice. It's not very exciting sometimes. Sometimes when you get home from school, all you want to do is watch YouTube. Uh, Miss Kitty, can you stay focused? Yes, I will. Yes. Well, I guess this is on YouTube, so maybe you should go practice. Miss Kitty, maybe you should go practice. I will. So kids, little bit of practice every week. I like to practice three to four times for about mm, 10 to 15 minutes. And if you can do more, well, you're gonna earn yourself some more desky rewards. So children, I'm gonna keep it short this week, but I will have new adventures every week with me, Miss Kitty. And me as well. Mainly me. Okay, kids. It is so nice to meet you. I will see you all soon. Keep up the good practice and mwah! Oh my god, Miss Kitty, you've got to press stop. Why do I have to do this every week? Oh my gosh.